It's Talk Funny, a podcast by Mark Bailey and other comics from all over. We ended up in Japan because you know what they say about Asia and the coronavirus that started in China. You only live months, not years, but months. The Talk Funny podcast from Nagoya Radio.com and Nagoya Comedy. Here's Mark Bailey. Let's talk funny. We're back. I'm Mark Bailey. Here's Tofi again. Hello, all. You guys have to talk about one more thing I wanted to mention about Frank Zappa. He testified in Congress, and then one of the congressmen said, I have some letters of complaints about you. Uh, Frank Zappa said, well, I probably know what that is. He said, people always tell me, your songs don't have choruses. And he said, yeah, the important part of that sentence is, my songs. They're uh, mine. Yeah. That's my work. Yeah. You don't like it? Turn it off. Yeah. Write your own damn choruses. You want to hear choruses, and they said, he said, my fans say, you played this way on the record, I want to hear it that way live. And he said, well, you've got the record, stay home and listen to the record. Or, if you actually respect me as an artist, maybe come listen to me, express myself, that's what art is. Art is not a rote, that you have to do it this way, blah, blah, blah. The first time was art, but I don't have to do that art. I don't have to tell the joke the same way. Well, let time. me be a contrarian, as you say comedians should be. Sure. As an audience member, I might want to see him do a difficult song live just to like see how it's done or to like just sure. capture visually how his face looks as he does it. You know? Yeah, there's, I get that. There's get some that. joy in seeing something very difficult performed uh, live properly. Of course, I'm not saying that it should be that way all the time. It's just, you know, show us that you did it without any assistance. You know. There is something to that, and uh, I don't know what you think about Rush, but one of my <laughs> one of my roommates was a huge Rush fan. I was just ambivalent He was straight, of course. Yeah, how did you, you know him? Rush, I mean, straight men are so predictable. They listen to Rush, <laughs> they listen to Kansas, they love Hotel California. It is the anthem of every straight man, and every band I've ever been in, they're like, oh, we're going to cover Hotel California. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, no. Now, you get some drum machine to do this. I'm going to go, like... A lot of musicians think that Hotel California is difficult to play. You know what I heard stupid. about Killing Me Softly with his song by Roberta Flack? Oh. When it was, I was a kid, but it was a real hit, actually. Yeah. And a lot of musicians, a lot of singers covered it. And my dad said he thought it was because it must be a difficult song mm. to do. If it was an easy song, of course, you know, you'd have other singers do it. But you'd had Tony Bennett, you had really masters of, of vocals doing that song it must be difficult I mean how many covers of Stairway to Heaven have you heard not a lot because it's a difficult song right. Hotel California I think musicians think it's difficult to me it's a boring song as right? a drummer it's actually and it's so straight it's like oh I'm driving at night oh some girl's waving at me oh I smell food food I go to a strange land oh they say we should party and drink yeah oh there's a sexy girl oh but she's gonna kill me oh action time oh I run away oh I'm gonna write a song about it I think they were high and they saw the Roach Motel I can could sum that whole song up. Roaches <laughs> check in and they don't check out. In that, Spanish. <laughs> that's the whole, um, in the 80s, that was the big uh, commercial was, you know, the Roach Hotel. Hotel California. Mm. I think the guys were stoned and they stole a commercial idea. But l- let me tell you another reason why I hate that song. I'm talking about context. In the 80s, in the late 70s when it came out, the Sex Pistols were supposed to be number one in the UK for God Save the Queen. The Queen would not allow them to get the number one spot so they were number two. Then they were there for two weeks. Then Hotel California showed up and it was propelled to number one. I don't think it deserved the number one spot. I think they were just desperate to have someone in the number one so that people would like forget what's going on because uh, you know punk was a very important force and it was disruptive vocally I would say you know Hotel California I think it's overrated and uh, let's just change the subject go, one more thing about the Eagles oh here we go I think the best song they ever did uh, and I've lived this actually is Lion Eyes Lying Eyes You Can't Hide Your Lion Eyes I mean the, the songwriting is amazing the vocals are amazing and it doesn't get any attention that Hotel California gets and most people if you say Eagles that's all they know Hotel California that's all they know the Eagles have much better songs than that anyway so I don't buy it but whatever and so Frank Zappa's point was it's my art and so if I don't want to have a course I don't have to have a course if you want to have a course you can also produce art I'm not interfering with it and if you have nothing but courses go ahead if you don't but, maybe, but maybe they see a potential for him to make a really great chorus and they're encouraging him to do it and actually make some money and get that hair cut. <laughs> oh, something about, uh, you were talking about, so my roommate loved Rush and he dra- dragged me to a concert. I felt like I was on drugs. He dragged me to a concert, a Rush concert. I would worked all day. I would worked like 12 hours. And then I'm there. I'm Rush is, okay, I know the songs. I bought some albums. And I'm there and it sounds exactly like the album. Mm. And now I start to think, is this all just lip synced? Ah. Is this all just the backtrack? This sounds exactly like the album. How is that possible? And my roommate said, no, they actually play it exactly like the album. 
And then I kind of thought, well, I could have just listened to the album. Mm. I didn't learn anything about Rush. Mm. I didn't learn. But let me tell you something. Rush, Rush is admired by fans of progressive metal and very technical people. So for them to do it exactly like the album is a show of prowess. It's like we really did this and we could do it every single time. So it, I understand why they did it. I agree with that. If that's true. I mean, uh, if they did it, right? Right. And I grew up with Kiss. I used to be a big Kiss fan, okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and there's. <laughs> Yeah, actually, kiss means vagina in Arabic. Oh, okay, yes. you told me that before. Yeah, <laughs> kiss. So there's a Turkish song called "Kiss Kiss." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, I think I understand. No, but that's actually not Turkish. Is not Arabic. I can be profane in Arabic, right? Yeah, yeah. Hatho <laughs> kissi. Yeah. Okay. Kiss. Their big thing was, you know, we're going to give you a big show. They never said they weren't going to lip sync. And now it's recently come out. They can prove now. With YouTube, you can prove if someone lip syncs or not. It's pretty easy. You know, microphone's three feet away from you. And then somebody goes, how you doing, Tokyo? You know, well, who said that? It's just on the track, right? It's on the live track. And so Kiss has been lip syncing and stuff. And so people, some Kiss fans said, well, who cares? You know, their, their legacy. And others said... That, that's an asterisk by their career, and it, it you know it preempts everything they've ever done. I disagree with the asterisk thing. I think, yeah, maybe they live sick. Paul is old. Jeez, he's almost 70. Paul Stanley, I think, 68, 70. And his voice is giving out. And this is his... Probably one of his last tours. Mm. He needs to make money. Listen, they probably weren't lip syncing at the to live out that last year <laughs> <laughs> properly. <laughs> but, but you know, the, you know, Black Pink. That's a, a K-pop band. Uh, kind of really hot girls. Just the word K-pop it makes my ears bleed. They happen to be in Goya to do a show, and they're famous for just lip syncing, you know. And so you actually come there to see the hot girls. That's the only reason you're there, is to be close, so you can fap later and go, you know, I was <laughs> eight feet away from, I was eight feet away from her kiss. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, how old is she? Bailey. She's a uh, third my age, right? Oh, okay. Something like that, you know. You know, the thing is, if they're not lip syncing, yeah, that's amazing that you can do is that, yes, as a band, I really respect it because they actually did perform every note exactly you mm-hmm. know and it was obvious they weren't lip syncing basically there's a fine line between just you get up and you're treating me like a schmo because you're just pretending to sing I'm not an idiot I can tell you're not singing and I paid $80 $120 for this ticket but you know it depends I, on how much of a mu- music purist you are you have a lot of gays who who just want to go see a Beyonce concert just to see Beyonce or Britney Spears just to see Britney Spears you know they don't care if I was in the room with her I was in the you're right right yeah I was you in know, the room like, with I, oh my god she's right there I'm taking a picture with her you know what I mean like it just depends on what kind of audience you have and everybody has an opinion on things these days so whatever I mean you know you had a story not related to this at all that you wanted to share about a glass? Oh, sure. So here's here's a tale about what I have to do to make money. <clears throat> so uh, I meet this guy on Grinder, and he's like, I want to explore my submissive side. I'm like, okay, sure. He's like, could you please come to Tokyo and we could like try something? I'm like, okay, but you're paying for my trip by Shinkansen. Oh. And he's like, yeah, sure, okay. I, I took the bus. And uh, I got there, and he takes me to this very fancy restaurant called Lodi's Steakhouse. And it is. And when he when we get there, the waiters whose suits could like buy my apartment, right. they were like, right. "Oh, Mr. Zenas, we missed you so much." And he's very fruity, but very poised. He looks like some like Flemish duke. You know what I mean? Like he's like, right. "Oh well, I've been uh, trying the uh, other establishments, but I always come back here." You know? I'm like, "This guy's so fruity. It's so cute." And they have his table ready, his usual table. We go inside, it's very art deco. And they ask us what we want to drink. And of course, me being the um, uncultured Arab that I am, I'm like, oh, well, what kind of wines do you have? And they're like, we have everything. I'm like, oh, okay. And they're like, would you like white wine or red? I'm like, "Uh, white wine. And they're like, okay, what kind? Now, flashback to like a few years ago, Drag Race season six, okay? Um... One of them was was a housewife uh, from Jersey Shore, and she says, I'd like a Pinot Grigio. So that's the only wine that I know. So I tell him, I'd like a Pinot Grigio. He's like, oh, sir, that's a red wine. I'm like, I didn't ask you what kind of wine it is. I want a Pinot Grigio. So anyway, he goes and comes back, and uh, and uh, my date says, you know what uh, one of my fantasies is? And his eyes like start popping up. I'm like, no, what is it? Of course, I'm being very butch. I'm being like, no. What is it? <laughs> you know? And uh, he's like, okay, so I'm drinking this glass of wine. And actually, it has your urine in it. And I know this. Hello, and, Patreon. And you know this, but everyone else thinks it's just wine, but it's actually your urine. That's my fantasy. I'm like, I'll be right back. I take my wine. 
I'm going to the bathroom, nursing my drink along the way. I'm looking at the decorations in this ho- in this restaurant. It's beautifully decorated. There's like wine cellar, tapestry, wine cellar, tapestry. The waiters are looking at me. They see where I'm going, but they cannot tell me anything. They want to. They're itching to be like, oh, you can't go to the bathroom with your drink, but they know that I'm paying the bill. And there's only one main item on the menu and it's a stick it's a hundred dollars so they will not have me you know have an unpleasant experience because of because of just taking my drink to the bathroom what by the way why not i mean i have no idea because they're japanese they'll just come up with some whatever reason to give you a hard time it's like it's like they are they're like allergic to foreigners smiling you know so if you're a comfortable (laughs) foreigner something is wrong we have to like be inconvenient for you so i go to the bathroom uh, now, now look, I'm a smart guy, okay? I empty half the wine glass into the, you know, toilet bowl, and I fill up the rest so that the level is the same as when I was there. And because it was, like, really good wine, the color did not change at all. I was surprised. I was like, red and light oh, yellow <laughs> would make dark orange. <laughs> right. Then I leave uh, the bathroom, and I pretend to be drinking. I'm not letting the liquid touch my lips, though. But I want to show the waiters and everyone that I didn't put anything funny in the cup. Like, I'm still drinking what I went in with. So I sit down. I put the glass next to me. I uh, I go down to pretend to, like, tie my shoelaces. He takes the glass and puts, and puts it next to him. And he starts drinking. And he's like, oh, my God. This is amazing. And he starts he starts sweating. And, like, his collar is getting more and more damp and, like, getting dark, uh, getting darkened. And his, and his like, text, uh, his face changes from, like, pink to red. And he just keeps drinking and drinking with his pinky out. He drinks all of it. And then he's like, cheers out loud. And it was just the funniest thing, you know. He's like, you just fulfilled one of my fantasies. And I was like, I accept tips. <laughs> Tupfi is uh, also available to tell the story at birthday parties for kids. I think, yeah, yes, and bar mitzvahs. Yes, yeah. wow, interesting. Uh, I have a quick story, and we can finish up with this. In the '90s, we did a lot of weird things with uh, one of these guys. is a former comic. I don't know if you've met him, but he's performed with us before. And he and I, for 15 years, we kept this secret. We decided that we can actually tell people about it now. But what happened? We did a similar thing. We were at a restaurant. We went to our bosses. There was an English school, and our English school was run by an alcoholic Japanese guy, and he had a bottle keep at a very members only. They didn't even let foreigners in, but because we worked with him, they let us in, and they probably don't let foreigners in now because of what we did, (laughs) and one night he wasn't there. We knew he had a bottle keep. We had his bottle keep card, and we gave it to the waiter. Waiter brought over some ice, brought over some whiskey, some water, and then one of my comic friends thought it'd be a funny idea if we drank all the whiskey and replaced it with urine. <laughs> so that the next time that my our boss, yeah, our boss came, it was just all urine and he'd be embarrassed. And we all quit basically within the next three months. I thought that was funny. And my friend went into the bathroom and came back with a full bottle. You know, we emptied it all first and then he came back with a full bottle. It looked like whiskey. You are encouraging him to convert to Islam, being like, you are leading a haram lifestyle. Is that right? <laughs> yes. So, well, there's no pork in it, but it, you know, it, well, exactly. it came from pork. You're, you're depriving him of alcohol. And so, some Muslims would say you did a very good thing. So, I thought that was really funny, and then I realized I actually have to go to the bathroom. So, I went to the bathroom, the joke was on me, because my two comic friends left. Now, in case we get caught, I get caught with that. Oh. And so, we didn't pay. You're supposed to pay for the ice. The bottle keep is free because you have the card, but you're supposed to pay for the ice and the water and the service, and we had, and we had some food. My friends just left. They didn't pay anything. Now, if I pay, they're going to take the bottle, and somebody, right. you know, they might notice this is kind of <laughs> weird. Why is this warm? Why is the whiskey warm, right? Uh-uh. Yeah, so I'm going to get caught. So I left, and so we stiffed them with probably about a 12000 yen, 100, <laughs> what's that, about $140 bill. One of my my comic friend had his new friend who just got hired there. Now, he was taking pictures the whole time. And so we had we had girls that were students. You're not supposed to date students there. My friend's friend is not too bright. And so the next day, he goes, yeah, I got some pictures for you. I said, make sure he doesn't bring the pictures to the office, you know, because we're going to get busted. Pictures of what? Of us with the girls oh. at that barkeep place. Oh. And then he's our boss will put two and two together. I come in in the morning before the boss is there. Those pictures are spread out on the table. Ah. You idiot. What are you doing? And Without he, me. <laughs> he, he, no, I'm in him, you know, and he le- he left these on the table and he said, you just take what copies you want. And I said, are you out of your mind? We just committed probably a felony, uh, food food tampering, 
and we're going to get fired, you know? So I gathered all the stuff up. He said, well, I thought you wanted pictures with these girls. I'm like, yeah, well, you don't leave them on the table. Are you sure this is not your former boss getting revenge on you with the... 